folks, we got ourselves a game. One to one tied up, and there you can see the Vibe Merchant himself clocking in for a hard day's work. An incredible run from Sentinels in overtime. Took some heroics 100%, but goodness gracious, did Gen G make them work for it, guys. I mean, Mimi, that was just, what a game we were just treated to. Yeah, I mean, Gen G was looking incredible in the first half. It seemed like all five of their players were stepping up and having moments, Lakia winning clutches. But once we got into that second half, Sentinels execs with this double flash comp were incredible, Mike. Yeah, their ability to really slow down the tempo. And uh, I mean, Josh kept talking about the rotations and stuff being absolutely key for Gen G. But what was crazy was Sentinels continued to slow things down. And that's sort of those sort of rounds where you're looking at it and you're thinking, yeah, Gen G have got the reads. They're going to have people in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Sentinels were the ones to actually dictate that. And they came out on top. That string of rounds was absolutely insane. Oh, it most definitely was. But let's not forget, though, that there were some brilliant calls. That actually takes us to our HyperX Reflex moment of the day. A little bit of a different one uh, this time around. Mimi, why don't you go ahead and walk us through it? Yeah, so this round, I, I think the real reflex of it is just showing how good the timings on utility is for Sentinels. Zekin using one satchel to get over that molly and then waiting for the second one. But right as that happens, you see that Sky Flash Dizzy combo coming in from Long and from Short perfectly catches that player in Hookah and blinds everyone on sight as well. So these traders from Sentinels can, uh, can swing out together and win this round. Their synergy on those are incredible and it really relies on these two guys on your screen, Mike. Absolutely does. I mean, Zekin, uh, we keep talking about how he's so explosive. I mean, no questions about it now. The most explosive player in terms of impact, in terms of what you see him doing on screen. And I think so far, it's 51% overall round win rate for Sentinels. It's 70% when Zekin gets the first blood. He's dropping, literally, there's a one in four chance of him getting a multi-kill. He has over 80 multi-kills already at this event, topping the charts. It's just insane to watch. And I love watching him and Tens play together. No matter the agent, yeah. that duo's synergy is absolutely on point in the server. But you know who I got to give some love to here? I, I got to give love to my ball brother over there. Sassy, my guy's holding it down. This dude seriously has been impressive, Mike. And this is a question mark coming into this. How is Sassy going to be? How is he going to perform? And I think in this one, he proved exactly why you want this world champion on your squad. Sure, and we said this earlier, top of the show, Sassy may, but maybe not numerically, has had a couple of Rough performances, you got to sure, say it, right? Sure. You're bottom of the scoreboard. You're the first one to tell you. Yeah, you're lacking the, the the value from utility, but particularly with this composition, like you've just noted there, having that second layer, particularly for some of these slow mid rounds, uh, has been absolutely crucial. And Sassy, in my eyes, this has probably been one of his best maps so far at the event. And exactly when it was needed. We're already into the agent select for Ascent. And this is a map where I think we really go back to what we've prided both these teams on. They're excellent fundamentals. They're both going to be playing the default comp, but I think we have to put some extra pressure on this map because for Sentinels in my mind this is a must win if they lose this map they'll need to go to Icebox where they're where they are absolutely not favored where they haven't had time to prep they really need to take home a cent yeah absolutely agree and we've also still got the concern of split that's, and that's right. behind the scent as well so talking about aiming for the 3-1 looking for this to be a little front loaded this is the one you've got to follow up from that bind victory if genji can win this one they have a real chance to lock in that trophy to win the first for pacific it's a pivotal map three we'll see how things land and send it back over to brennan sideshow even more important with this one here yeah getting us started in ascent in our staging ground Territory left to be claimed for both of these teams in a best of five. Constant back and forth. There's so much weight on Ascent. And so much uncertainty, I think, in terms of how these two teams are going to perform. It's a map that Sen like to float. They recently saw them perform incredibly well in their recent game against Paper Rex. Zekin in particular, starting on defense. Gen G grouped up over towards Tiles. Both teams, when we saw them play against Paper X, did a lot of the defensive set plays. But I think that was a specific anti. I don't know whether we're going to see as many of them here. It's a trap play in mid for Sen. Turret to watch contact over towards B. The question is, how do Sen pivot now that the turret takes a contact? It's going to be Zekin. Iron it up onto the angle. Orb. Kicked up. Now a smoke. And this is quite nice because once you break the turret, you actually break the trap setup in mid as well. So Sen's setup that was dangerous to walk mid on, dangerous to walk cat on, now gets dismantled a little. The macro game continues to be played really beautifully by Genji. Taking a bit of a wonder now, straight down mid. 
Got the alarm bot to notify them of this one here. Sentinel's potential chance of the replay, but no, just a shock dart. Bit of damage now onto Munchkin. Now steps going to be made with the alarm bot broken. Here it is, the flurry and rush from the Sentinels players. They Celsius have to really flash. back them up. He does have the flash. Paranoia goes wide and does not connect onto the necessary target. And that is second still with that dash spraying away. White praying as well. It's all Sentinels. Flexing and colliding. Only two left to stand here for Gen G. Munchkin lack here. Side by side. Now there is damage done, but the door has been broken into their face. And with only 12 seconds left, Spike dropped down and spawned on top of it. You have to make a good go of this if you are Gen G. We have to take liberties. How's he got away with that then? Time? Four seconds, barely enough, but now broken in place. Zekken slaps him down with that one. A pistol round now. Granted here for Sentinels. Zekin gets the cleanup on the final two, but his positioning tucked behind the box. Getting the pick on Meteor, I believe it was, who tried to push lane. That's the one that's huge. This kill right here. If he ends up losing it, Zelsus is under pressure. Suddenly the B side looks like it's going to fall a little. Very good setups from Sen. From the pistol into the adjustment. All looking good. Somebody to keep an eye on as well. I mean, Second, let's seal it up onto that pistol round here. Getting a bit of acknowledgement, but we'll be taking a gander that head to head, him versus Texture. Texture, another great map too on Bind. Seeing how that made manifest. Will it be a continuation into the series yet to be seen? Now, Gen G looking to just take control, maybe get an orb if they can, but they're really just being fought over this every step of the way. Yeah, mode down. Not really funneling the alt orbs into the players that would want them most. That's a silver lining to what has otherwise been a very simple round so far. Trying to bait out the second shot so they could punish. The moment. <laughs> but second, with the ghost as well. Yeah. Knocking that one out. So that is flawless. Yeah. Sentinels can now set themselves up going into that third round here. Really critical one. And I think this is where we'll get to see are Sentinels going to go for the defensive set plays? and that aggression, because this would be the perfect round to try something like that. Yeah. You know, flash recon into mid, have tens teleport into a smoke or something like they've done before, or even go for a tiles crunch. It kind of looks like they're set up for a tiles crunch, except that there isn't a flash in mid. Maybe just a bit of aggression over towards B main instead. Doesn't particularly matter anyway, because Gen G, all five players grouped up as if they want to go for a fast A. Stacked up. No time wasted with that one, just a flash to get them control towards A main, deep knife. Going Quite deep enough, actually, really. Look at the tank. Well, it does, in fact, actually. Now, but the turret's going to be broken with the Ghana Swarms. Still not deaded. Yeah, nobody has gone to close the door, so the Nana Swarms haven't been used. Now they're popped. But Karen took one of them out and gets a safe door down. Same pathing by Genji, just avoiding all that Sentinel utility, but it does set it up now for the 5v5 retake. Now, of course, guns not on the side here for Sentinels, but they do have the util. They have been clean with it in the past. Yeah. Texture. To take the fight there, but caught out in the open. The paranoia tight, tight into these positions being flooded and swarm. Not enough with the bullets the, to spray the them down. Reflank attempt now in through it. Tens. He spots it, but doesn't expect the second player. Still, Celsius not being able to stick that defuse. They can't even get second onto it, and the damage has been done to all of them. Sassy has to really stick this one and pray for his life. Not enough, barely over the line here for Gen G. And they lose Lackia too. So that's a very expensive round to get on the board for Gen G. I like the idea that they went for there. Two players, Munchkin calling it, going for the wrap, back down through Catwalk, and then playing it one at a time. So Tenz thinks he's dealt with that post plant lurk. And Meteor's able to pop through. At the end of the day, though, I think that's a win in the column for Sen. <laughs> it's not technically, but they've done quite a bit of damage. Kept the economy under control for Genji and got themselves the Odin, the op. Big tools to work with. Massive tools. Essential, really, to any good hold of a cent on the defensive side. The second took an early peek down mid, but think twice about it. I think off the back of all that noise that Genji are making, open for a bit of a tussle here. Now the drone does tag. Will there be any danger for Tens inside the position this time? Texture aware of it. Flash through around the back as well, but he can't quite lend a second one. At least his teammates can. Lackier. Clean up duty for him and now retaking with the operator. Second, a stray shot. A gamble in that position. Spike planted. Oh! oh! <laughs> Ridiculous. I think this is one of the situations where you just need to save the Oppen Odin. Yeah. Get out of there. 
Not a fan of that defensive hold. The smoke that Tens is using, got no problem with that. The one way used to be more standard, but plenty of teams running the, the full smoke that blocks up A main. It's really annoying for the attacks to deal with. You're seeing that Lakia is investing the drone pretty much every time. And actually, if they start to get the read on that, you know, Tenzo Zelsis could start dominating that smoke and trying to spam him down when he's going for the drone. Standing ahead. There are little counterplays that you can do, but just not a huge fan of the timing that Tenz chose to try to get back into the, the kind of A main cloudburst the Texture had thrown. The attackers are going to be in there a little faster most of the time. All right, so Sen, silver lining, they still kept the off on the Odin. There it is, that entry. It just puts a lot of pressure on Celsius then, backpedaling. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair and honest, Valorant. Uh, we have the devs in house. I'm sure they're working on it as we speak. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Sen have managed to at least you know, scramble a buy to give ever so this slightly. He's half armor and guardians. I think this is going to be fast here, Brent. I think Zekken's going to want to look for an aggressive position. Or are Try they going for the one way and tucking into wine? Gearing up for it, and that didn't tag. Yeah, but it did onto Tenz, who was thinking about using Paranoia. Now mid. Name of the game here for Gen G. Four players waiting. Zekken. Too much to account for here. Wow, still gets out and still has a dash as well. In fact, is he going to use it? Yes, ops for it! Can't hit it with the readjustment there still. Now he nails it. But he's hitting the wall. Texture though, he's so rapid. Look at this guy. He's all the way up into heaven. But he is going to be shut down in the end. John QT. Good awareness from that one. It's about trying to keep up with the tempo. Can't let Gen G run all over you. Lackier, sole survivor. One shot left for Zekin. Shot down. Pushes him out. Great punish. So a lot more to do. He wants to make a go of it. Lucky it has been astoundingly clutch, but he's not going to get anything this time. Celsius ah. shuts it down. What a round from Zekin with the operator in hand. Oh, yeah. When we saw him play against Paper X, barely pulled out the op on defense, actually. Mostly rifling, mostly going for those uh, defensive aggression plays. And now he's just allowing people to walk into him. Gorgeous reposition onto some of these angles, too, playing around the utility very well. Bit of a question mark for me, honestly, how Zekin was going to play with the op. We saw him absolutely dominate on this map. But like I said, mostly with the rifle. He's looking very good to open here. Hello, jump spot. Real chance here. Doesn't anticipate it. Texture. Yeah, what the hell is that? <laughs> Ferrari peak. That's amazing, though, playing with that. Oh, and look at this, Caron. So deep. Oh, through, and he gets the punish there on two Celsius. Looking for that information inside the smoke. One of his own making. Drone clears through, and now he can just retreat back into the site tucked. What a play by Gen G. Incredible from both of those players, Texture and Caron. Now Sen. Got more than they bargained with. And a player disadvantage retake. And they've got an off. Very Five difficult. Granted. Nothing to write home about here. Now Gen G should really be in that advantage position. Yet Texture goes down close. Quarters action for Meteor. Action indeed. But he does go down to the follow through, spray through of Sassy, anticipating it. The reflank now, just to reclear into mid, and now regrouping up here for Sentinels. Damage done, but so is still on the opposite side, Zekin. You respond with that one. Oh, need to deal with these players though. Anchoring Last tucked player close cower and he's gone. Lackia. Hunter's Fury available. Indecisive though in terms of how he wants to play this one. Sassy's just sticking oh. this oh. and it is watched. Get down, Mr. President. Sentinels. I mean, pulling that one out of nowhere. I'm not gonna lie. Play a disadvantage with the up ready. You shouldn't be winning retakes. But it's Zekin again who actually finds two kills. One by peaking heaven, if I'm not mistaken, and the other. They throw an. A recon dart that forces a swing, ahead. and he gets this kill kind of for free, but good awareness. That is bonkers that they've turned that one around, especially when Lucky had the Hunter's Fury to work with towards the end there. You're right, it really did seem like he wanted to set up a Shock Dart play or the Hunter's Fury and just realized, I have to swing this. Yeah. It's a tight turn. It certainly is. Still danger though. Knife gonna be stopping. A few of these Gen G players in their tracks there. Karen, he actually can't get out of here, but it's a knife on either side, so there's no util to flush him out of that spot. And finally, they get their abilities back online. TP's out of dodge. While all this has been going on, Gen G, happy to take that B main control. We're going to try and set up Lackier there in the meantime. Yeah, looking to just try to farm the ult orb, Meteor one away. So it's entirely possible that they're playing for that. 
Second pushed away. They know that there's no op over towards A. And Texture clears out the entirety of A main. This Paranoia. is going to allow, I think, Meteor to get his ult online. They might really want to go for this with the lockdown. Consider it. But what is going on here, though? Yeah. Genji retreating away, but they, they haven't picked have up the orb. Control. So they can't use the lockdown to fake towards A. They've just got some kind of read here. And to some degree, they're correct. Zekken was opting towards mid. Now he's picked up Heaven. You know, they are hitting the weaker side. Texture sees the barrel. Oh my goodness, what a timing for the ult. It's away to knives, and now Texture, weak as anything, declawed in the mix. I think back away and hide. That might have been based off a flash that Munchkin threw over towards A. Are they expecting this on B? Does that a sword? Look at the mini -map. What the hell is going on here? Still, the adjustments there with the flick of the wrist. And Genji again left scrambling. There's 15 seconds left, and they don't want to survive. Don't want to keep these into the next round. I mean, Tesh has got nothing. You don't keep the blades, so you don't keep the odds. Left. Flash popped through round and aside here, spamming and spraying. A reload, no punish. Five seconds left. Plant online, Time. maybe enough. Maybe oh. enough. It's going to be going down Spike to the play. wire. And they do get that continuation. And Meteor gets the kills. Added concatenation, man. Round to the back. It's watched for. Texture will get shut down. And flanks on flanks need to be managed. Paranoia now. Doesn't break the door down, but both players both. blinded. One that is perfection. Remaining. Immaculate placement. Meteor with 32 health. Oh. And nothing but dreams will be fading away. The Sentinels win a rather scrappy turnabout round. I've been praising the macro from Gen G all match, but that one boiled the carrots for too long. Now oh, yeah. turned it into mush. I think they could have played it a little more simply. I mean, Munchkin almost gets an opportunity to get in there, but Zekka makes up for it with a gorgeous refight with the operator. And he's frying, by the way. If you want to talk about individuals, Zekka's looking just as good as he did when he played this map previously. And Texture's not really finding those openings as easily. Of course, it's harder when you're in the attack side jet. I mean, you have to be set up with Util. Not going to be favored into a lot of those fights, but... But also, it's Texture. Exactly. You kind of expect more from him. Here's a fast play, though. Texture. This time not shying away. There's a dart over the top that sets us up on either side here. Texture now is into the site. He's worried about back site. Still, he could seek to deny. There's no one watching the back here of Zekin, but he does dash away and out of the fight here with the smoke covering it. Four players spotted. Good information here for Sentinels, but Texture again needs to be this playmaker. Karen teleports in over towards lane, only with 30 health, and they use the lockdown as well, but look at the lockdown positioning, it's oh, a nice yeah. mid and market. It's so good for keeping control of sight. Karen dies, but he'd already stuck that plant. Second will get detained, will slow them down just a tad here with the plant down. A potential difference making. Look at Lackey's position. Again, he's got our Hunter's Fury, he's going to be waiting for the right time to strike. Same with Meteor. Takes up that space, but he was blind as anything. And John QT, a little bit delayed, but eventually getting that trade. Hunter's Fury now is being used proactively. Two tags, no kills, though. Damage no. being done. The back side players, they need to be dealt with. Hopping through with the flash. Texture putting them down side by side. Tens will follow through. Time has run out entirely. And another's been bought here with all of these plays. Gen G barely pulling that one out from the jaws of defeat. I really can't believe that Lackey had decided to send that Hunter's Fury instead of playing for the time. Because time seemed like it was the biggest asset on Genji's side. That ended up being the deciding factor. Anyway, I was worried there for a moment. That aggression from Meteor is so classic to the way that Genji loved to play as well. The Pacific team's Paper X do this too. Not happy to just fall into backside B when they play the post plants. Always looking to contest. If they think they've got that timing, they will take it. Okay, so Gen G get their third on the board. A recon looking to push away Zekin if he was playing around mid. Very mobile got, though. Yeah, he got smoked off and now he's going to pick up mid at the same time as the recon dissipates. Seeing the player move over towards Cat here, it's going to be called out. At least it should be that awareness. Double done again. Hit it no away. No way. Tens. My God, man. And the follow up, the backup arriving in the form of an ultimate. Couldn't have been better. You give him an inch, he'll take a mile. They just whiffed on him for a moment, and he readjusted his aim and took down two. He looked completely caught there. The game plan worked for Gen G. It's just <laughs> they just couldn't land the shots in the yeah. moment. 
2v3, though, and we've certainly seen Gen G pull out rounds like this before, especially with, when Sen lose info around the map. You know, Karen could be in a position here where he just shoots them all in the back. Yeah, reminiscent of Breeze. There was multiple scenarios where Sentinels threw away those player advantage situations because they didn't know where the enemies were, and now with the plant down. Yeah, do they go for the ult? If you ult, you kind of have to just sit there and defend it. Down on line, that's what they were waiting for. Here's a lockdown, pushing the players out wide. Caron, you have to defend this. To make a play. Yeah, you do have to defend this here. He's not going to be detained from this spot. Here's it. Deccan not adjusting for that angle. Not even expecting it here. Now they have to worry about this crossfire setup. But John QT is half already onto that defuse. Sassy responds with the fire. But here he does not know. Finally, shot dart fired. Sassy tapping, forcing out wide again. Lakia this time prevails. Monstrous in the clutch. Time again. The enemy of Sentinels. They had a player advantage, but they had no information about where Genji had disappeared off to. Another great play for Tens that ends up being wasted somewhat. By his team's inability to capitalize on those advantage situations, and Genji using other advantages. Map control, info denial. They don't need the players online. There's a fast play, though. Already setting up. It's a flash in hand alongside that dark texture. Might just be blinded fully. He's playing inside the smoke. He dominates it. Tends to be playing this one before, but with the Odin spam at least potentially even out, but not quite. Lakia straight there in the fight. Side by side. Advantage now for Gen G. A massive advantage with John Cutie falling. That's all of that killjoy utility over towards B that's disabled. Sen are going to have to make a proactive call here. They can't just wait this out. Gen G are just. Doing the exact same, waiting, yeah. hoping to catch that proactive call. It's a great read. Celsius might just walk and wade right into it. The crossfire oh. of a century, and look at that. The call to 3 2 1 peak it down. Tap, 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 second. Right back at you. He's got plenty more to deal with now. Yeah, he wants to make a go of it. He's got two, but might be too little, too late. He has read this, though. He might be able to get into spawn at the right time and to cut this off and get another for free. Doesn't break the knife, actually, yes, and he's got the dash back online. You just don't think logs here, though. You oh. just never think about that. Don't expect it. It's going to have to be reactions and adjustment potentially there. Still close to the corner. Jiggling from Lakia. Decides to take the timing and a fight right to him. So five to five. Even up now again for Genji. And this is a really good spot for them. Attack side of Ascent. We've got to imagine it plays out a lot more typically. Sentinels going for their first piece of defensive set play aggression there. And it's dominated. They already used this. It was round six, I believe, the last time they played on Ascent. And Tens that time was able to get into the smoke before his opponent dominated it and got the win. This time, Texture just a little faster, just a little sharper. Send knocked down onto an eco and go for another set play by the look of things. You have to take risks here. I mean, when your money's so dire, if you're letting Genji take the lead on their attack side. Ooh, missing the silent jump up. Second, it's given an indicator. Good awareness, though. Here. Yeah, it doesn't do any damage, but it indicates that Zekin is not going to get away with his bucky right. play. Movement. Enough to survive. Doesn't even use the dash. One of those rounds that Genji would love to keep clean. While there's a little moment in the round as well, five rounds on attack side ascent is looking pretty good. Yeah, it is. It has been somewhat even. Sen have, in fact, actually been pretty good on the attack side too. Up through mid. Gap is spotted here by Gen G. Now a fast play approach. Trying to slam into these anchoring players, but it's on them to try and hold their ground. Sentinels standing side by side here, but again, the weaponry just not ideal for the job. Now, Texture feeling it necessary to really clear through a lot of that. Hello, Karen spotted and an upgrade here for the anchoring players. Again, close, tuck two dice, but there's no trade and no swings. And the anchoring players out back here with the Sheriff. John QT, but not, not expecting it away with the Bucky! Gaming! No! <laughs> Can't land the shots, damage done to it, 10 set up, it's a 1v1. That's such an important one at that, the money was dire, tens, six bullets, accounted for! Exactly what he needed! Another miracle! Ritualistically brought down by the crowd, willing it into existence, I think. How are they doing these? No shot. What a timing. Ah. 
to be honest with you, I thought it was over when the Bucky didn't deliver those two clean one-shot yeah. kills. I mean, I'm sure Dezekin didn't one-shot them. Yeah, he was so close, but still able to finish one of them off. The other week, Tens wins a 1v2 towards the end after opening things up. So many rounds like this. It's a Red Bull clutch, but it's also economically upset the tide. Ever so slightly for that final round, but still the knives online for texture. Bit of Odin spam, got to respect that one with the dark coming through. Counterplay in order. Back here not to be dissuaded away from it. He's going to be earning his ult as well. And Sentinels have got to be thinking about the fact that Texture would love to do some kind of updraft dash engage into B now that they have B main control. So, you know, you're playing retake B at this point because you don't want to challenge that. He's got knives. But you've also kind of set up for a bit of a retake A approach. Now Tens and Zelsis looking to re-explore perhaps. Right here. Pinging out the alarm bot, important. Genji have to make sure that nobody followed that drone up. Walking up now, Sassy. It's all about when you pick your time. Is a counter spam. Almost gone down potentially there with the damage down. And out of here with the drone. Everybody lit up, but the shot goes wide and just goes a miss. Second, though. He's still alive in the fight here, but a TP into the back of the site now. There is that danger facing, but cancelled. Only 30 left. seconds left. What is the call to be made? The reposition back in away. Hunter's Fury. And Lackey is hoping to set this one up for the rest of the team. They're going, they're going to pivot. They're going to A. 20 seconds indecisive. They're going back to B. Running back to B. Can't be making plays like this, man, but maybe just getting hectic in those final moments. TP engaged Meteor. He's lugged his way in. Damage left. done and another kill found. It's all being added up. Right click. Kills here. This is the kid. Right click. Absolutely correct. Oh, the body block. Oh, my God. Absolutely unbelievable. Tells us 1v2, 1v2, 1v2. Rushing entirely into it. I don't think I've seen around that chaotic the entire tournament. Jinji didn't know where to end. What a way to finish that half. They pulled it out of the back of Meteor getting in. Tens went for an alt play, cancelled it for info, got caught. And then they have to body block Caron to avoid him being caught by Zekken. Look at them getting in front of the classic. Okay. Ludicrous. Munchkin, you crazy little raccoon. How have you done that? <laughs> six to six, that's where we stand here on Ascent. Absolute insanity, but standing by on the floor, some of Sentinel's biggest fans. It's another great half of Valorant here in the Grand Finals, and I got two very special guests with me here. It is Tenz's mom, Valerie, and Sassy's wife, Sophie. Welcome to the Grand Finals. Now, every uh, map has been so close so far. They were so pumped on stage when they won Bind. I wanted to know what was going through your mind when they managed to close that out. I'll start with you, Sophie. It's crazy, actually, but it's a 6-6. Six, six. We're even. I think we got it. Oh, yeah. I like it. I like it. What about you, Valerie? Uh, I was a little nervous, but... I feel good, and I think they got this. I think they're bringing the trophy home. I can feel it. Oh, well, it's been, uh, what, 1,029 days since uh, Tens first brought that Masters trophy home. So tell me, what's it been like to follow his journey and support him all the way back to the top? It's amazing, entertaining. I love it. He's, I'm in awe of him all the time. He's awesome. We think so too. Come on, guys, give it up for Tens. Come on, come on. Uh, and for you, Sophie, uh, you won there uh, in Istanbul when Sassy became a world champion. So what are your emotions right now to know that he could potentially win a trophy here with you in the audience? I think if we get the trophy, it's going to be a really step up in his career. And the boys are amazing. I love them all. And let's go, Sen. Come on, you guys know what to do. Sen, turn off. Sen, turn off. Sen, turn well, let's see if Sentinels can close this one out on a set. Crowd certainly rallied up here. Right behind Sentinels, trying to get it done. And a reminder, it is only 10s returning to the final stage for Sen. But Sassy also making his third time here, both looking for another trophy. An elite group. There's only five players, I believe, who've been able to lift the trophy twice and they would be looking to join them, Tenz and Sassy. We've also never had somebody win a Masters and a Champions oh, yeah. before. Sassy 
He ended up overcoming this round finals against the Demons that is Gen G. Would be the first player to ever do it. Pretty incredible. We spoke about the importance here, getting the rounds up online, sent with these compositions, you know, by all metrics, from what we know. It's not an attack-sided map. Ahead. That puts even more importance now onto this pistol round, four Sentinels. And I think, again, I'm looking at the Gen G defensive rotations and how John tries to play with those. Because Gen G are just so happy to trust the read. Look, I mean, at the beginning here, Caron getting info in A main. Oh, like he is going to start calling people back over towards B there with Tinkin, it was A. He's out open, they could be fast onto him, but they're not really going to be quick enough here. Just waiting for the drone out with the shock touch through as well. A lot of damage, tagged him up, second. It's like pause into the place, like pause into the angle, waiting now. What is the call from the rest of them? A flash play into the back here, but they're just waiting for the right time to strike, potentially, but now jumping right, leaping into his face. And there it is from Gen G, calling their bluff, they want to fight it. The front section of that side of Paranoia is good, and it blinds them all up. Three players tucked to the site now for Sentinels, and they still don't have that plan down. I feel like as soon as Zelsis goes for it, Genji are going to explode, and he thinks the same. A dink, straight damage. And it could come down to anything. A few stray shots now, Paranoia flying forward, still no spike being planted. One way smoke. Oh, Caron? Has he got a pixel? No, not quite. No, not quite at all, but waiting for it now, the knife. Takes away the abilities, takes away the threat of this one, and as the tower is getting broken, they swing right into it, Gen G. Surely not, they're doing it again. Wonderful, wonderful patience. And capitalizing off the right moments there. Certainly. They look great with it. As soon as Sen put pressure on the player backside, that is instantly turned into texture dashing into a smoke to take front sight. So as soon as they know that Sentinels are focused not on them, they go and get themselves into a retake situation and start putting pressure even before the plant is down. <laughs> they are looking good. Taunts being thrown across the stage. And a great way to open this up on the defense side. Yeah, Genji going to be really quite happy with this one. It's all the fundamental stuff. The timing is excellent, they're confident, and they're doubling up together in these moments. It's respectful from Zekken. Tagged up by the knife, but still decided just to just take that fight close to them. You're hoping that Gen G players were not posted on an angle and trying to take a fight aggressively, when actually I feel like that's the way that Gen G plays. They're not afraid to try to challenge angles. They're not the kind of team to just drop back and keep giving up room over and over again for free. They like to disrespect utility a little bit and post up. Clear game plan here though from Sentinels on their eco. Can use a flash to re-clear into A main, make sure that the orb gets uh, loaded up there onto Celsius. It's only a few away from his ult, so they're just thinking ahead here into this round. Yeah, but they are still quite a way away from this. Right? Because there wasn't any damage in this round particularly, Celsius is still gonna be three away from getting that online. It's not particularly gonna be helpful. At least not in the short term, I should say. Yeah, now they're going to be hoping for a bit of a plan here, but a Paranoia sent flying, TP forwards, litting, lighting him up, Charon, 20 HP surviving, strenuous in the approach, but look at that, just a collapse, straight into the fragment nade and the bullets, sent flying, so flawless, everybody surviving for Gen G. Beautifully done. Now this is where I want to see what Gen G have got planned. You see Texture buying the Operator when the rest of his team is going for the bonus. It's not too crazy, lots of teams that end up going for that. But do they have a game plan to set him up? One of the other things that stuck in my head actually from listening to an interview from HSK was that he said one of the things they've tried to focus on is snowballing the game by utilizing their aim and aggression. Right? Not by trying to make smart game plans necessarily, but by putting pressure on their opponents, by wanting to fight in moments like these. And Texture looks like he wants to take the op for a walk off the back of Sova Utility. That's great information, knowing exactly where oh, John yeah. is. You don't have to be worried about other sight lines. He's really worried. Turret broken. John, still in the lineup here. I almost got caught, didn't he? Almost got caught, but look at it. I mean, the dash still active. Texture I can smell it, blood in the water. That's the same pace and anticipation problem that I was noticing before. Genji are quite a bit faster than Sen expect. Right. Well, first used to just try and cross Sentinel now. 
Scurrying away, trying to take control of A, but then there's a Paranoia Ghost flying, actually missing onto Sassy. No clear connection, but he still maintains control of A main control. Yeah, Tens caught. Sassy dropped as well. This is looking bonus like a monstrous round. bonus. I mean, this is beautiful for Gen G. Sen never had an inch in this. Never had an opportunity. You had both of the Flash players, Karen and Munchkin, looking to lock down Tree. And even as Sen tried to make some approach in that department, Tense was the only player A main, threw a paranoia, got caught in the smoke, and it's just, it's over at that point. You're in a 5v3, it's just done. He, he just wanders into this smoke, assuming that Karen must be focused on Tree, because that's where he threw the paranoia. And again, the anticipation from Gen G is just so much better. They throw the paranoia and they're like, right, this is the timing that the A main player is going to take. Let's stop them. The awareness is so good. And again, from a player, Caron, who has not been a pro before joining Gen G. It's insane. He played on an amateur team, and basically, that was a long time ago. He, he frankly, just got picked out of ranked. Ranked player on the big stage, but he's really performing. I'm shaking against it. Flash repeat. Caron knows to respect that one. He's going to be using the TP just to get the hell out of there. And a call is made again from Gen G. All stacked up. Yeah, look at them. I mean, Meteor is already starting to rotate away from B. So confident this is going to be an A exec. But the util expended here, though, with the Dart fading away. Caron shuts that down, doesn't he? Tends forward with the Sheriff, but again, not too much you can do, not without the rifles. One enemy remaining. I see, weakened down. Of full awareness of the positioning here. This is Gen G, not just in control, they're running away with this map. It's Genji's map pick, but it's one where Kaplan earlier in the coach interview said they were feeling very confident coming out of their game against Paper X. Uh, and the implication there that the desk picked up on is that they were going for a 3-1 win by winning on bind, yeah. ascent, and split. And this is looking less and less likely the more rounds go on. I want to see John start messing with the defensive rotations. It's not something we've really seen. You need to be faking at least half as much as your opponents are over-rotating. And so far, they're nowhere near. Texture seeking out to ruin the mirror with the flash. Okay, return of the fire, second. Right back at you with the nades rebounding. Meteor dodging over and around. No way. Second was blind as anything. Dashed forward to try and punish, but Meteor is tucked into this corner. And there should be that punish online. Karen seeking to relieve it. Zelts has dropped down onto his knees. I mean, is there going to be any chance of even just a res to pull him back it's up? It's going to get punished. They need surely, to be aware. Surely picking him up. Zelts is there, but no. Spamming through the wall, but no kill collected. John QT. What a play. ETA cosplay in effect. This guy is how... I mean, found the gaps and more. And another one to the collection. Sight opened up right when the team needed it. That's incredible. What a read by John. Getting himself tucked into logs because Meteor went down early and that was open to them. Huge play. Not exactly running a fake, but just challenging Gen G for the map control and beating them. <laughs> I don't think Tens is going to survive this interaction. But oh, yes! <laughs> Never doubt him. <laughs> well, I'll shut my mouth. Not the world's most important kill, but a funny one to end it. There was a bit of a disaster in the middle of that round, though, with Zekin getting full blinded. Was that a team flash, or what Looks like happened it here? perhaps. Yeah, I think it was a, a bit of a team flash play. Oh, yeah, yeah just, he just full stares at Zelsis' flash. Bit weird, but didn't really hurt them whatsoever. John bailing them out of that situation. Not necessarily with his macro calling, but with a great solo play. Reading the game. The bankroll runs deep here for Gen G. Sentinels that need to dig even deeper. To spread default to try to start the round. Not over investing over towards A, but certainly making it feel like A. Right? And this is where you start to see the defense pulled towards that A defense. It's only luckier over towards B. But now, as there's a little bit of mid pressure, you see things shifting around. And Texture with an operator looking. To take that pick through mid. Directly down mid. They might just walk into him. Texture's quick. Is he there before Zekken? It looks like it. And now he's found the timing. It's just so damn instinctual! And again, a difference maker. Zekken. He's left Texture reeling. Back to back rounds now. That is a ludicrous swing. Perfect pre aim.
I mean, pretty much a pre-fire, I think. There's no time to react to that. He just knows exactly where the jet is going to be set up. Grouped up, gathered. Lackier. From the shock dart. Here's that one now. What a close. No, Almost got it. John, yeah, it was a critical target. It needs to stay alive with the lockdown now in play. What is the call to be made? Gen G, how do you fight this one? Split up across the map here. I mean, it's just really only Munchkin. They're just trying to get Lackier out of there. Hunter's Fury through and out into the spawn. It's the location. 12 seconds left. They need to get this spike down and planted. Maybe to push this one back left. and away, but Gen G, they're out of there. It's only John in an aggressive position in the post plant right now, and Sassy's miles away. Doesn't have that ult to work with. Doesn't indeed. He's not going to have shock dart lineups from there, so he needs to find Can some way of having impact. He's start clearing the paranoia here. Still close quarters enough. It has revealed, and they have cleaned him up. With John down, finally a kill found. Second. Not going to be blinded up by that one, but still emanating out with waves of the suppression. He's dropped to his knees. Meteor, last one left. Unless he can get Munchkin back alive, a tap. Fading out the spray here, three players yeah, left out players. in the open, Sentinels running over them. That was a difficult situation there, John getting caught in his aggressive position, Sassy way out of the fight, Zekka needed to step up, and he did it. This opener is sublime. And then he also follows up by being able to punish Lakia and to stop Munchkin. It's an amazing round from the star player of Sentinels. I say the good star job, player. Good job, good job, One good of job. the superstar. <laughs> Plenty to pick from. Plenty to pick from. So Sen is still making a go of this, even though Genji are in the lead. In the lead. Arguably still favored, but they are starting to put a dent into that economy for Genji. The loss round here. Genji, vital for Sentinels. They're going to be like hoping for a flash yeah. repeat. Yeah, another jet duel. That just fades away. They're going to be using Util of their own now. Paranoia even layered on top. Spamming away. An exchange of lead. No casualties. Genji not over-rotating this time. Keeping a couple of players in mid. Realizing that it's not a full commitment from Sen here. They're just fighting for map control. You could consider this a win though for Sentinels. Because they're going to be going into a site that only has three players on it. Yeah. And that's assuming they commit to A. Munchkin gathering that information. As the nade ready here, as time runs short, John QT, hello. Flash forwards on top of it here, but backing away, will get cleaned up eventually. The air is sprayed down, fragment, nade, texture, and Munchkin all combined. And they have shut down his approach. Tens with ultimate, it's gonna try to get into the B site and get the plant down. Yeah, it's an open site for him, still rapid. Sassy get there? Oh, Sassy, he's picked them apart. Texture onto that rotation, but he is alone now. Tens is gonna do a hell of a job to try and hold on to this one. Caron sticking, no way. Up onto it, just gets that information. Now two players assaulting the position slowly, surely. Sassy's so far away. He needs so much, he needs so much here. Sassy is miles away. Reinforcements are lacking. Yeah, seeking to disjoint it. That dart, it was fantastic though. Still playing inside the smoke like you shuts it down, but time has been bought. A tab, Sassy. Does he think it's open to the fuse? Spamming away. Counter spam from Munchkin, sticking from Lackia. Full defensive setup. 11 now on the board. It's a nice try there with that dart, seeing if he could assist Tens while still being positionally a long way away. I think it wasn't quite planted in the spot where he was able to get the wall back there. It's this triangle set up again over towards A, stopping Sentinels getting in on the A splits. It looks really nice from Gen G. Anytime Sen have tried an A split, the A main players have not been able to have any impact. Yeah. They're just sending a drone in there and they can't actually push the players from Gen G who are killing the people on cat. The A splits are being defended immaculately. But look at this, Sen are so convinced that this is going to be defensive aggression in this round. They know that Texture had to pop knives. And they are ready for the Hunter's Fury play, a classic set play that teams would love to do. Really far back. Has pulled 20 seconds off the clock here. With how time has been playing an issue for Sentinels. It's a little moments like that that might make the difference in the round. Grouped up now with Texture. Fast rotation to try and back up the rest of his team out towards the A site. Love this positioning from Lakir as well. If he stays over towards Market, he'll have a perfect alt line, but instead he drops back towards B. 
Spotted people in mid and maybe just worried that it could be a B split. 50 seconds. Time certainly is ticking here. Decisions need to be made. I mean, you haven't pulled out good util from Gen G. They can just stall you out. Finally going to be showing some presence, but with the knife tags, that's the second. This doesn't give you too much info. It could be a cat push, it could still be a B split. They're going to get destroyed, but they're trying to fake A presence, perhaps. I mean, the spike is in the middle of nowhere. And certainly they are fast. It was second. He's rapid on the uptake texture, even more so. And the Hunter's Fury to punish. Alarmbot chasing him into the top section of mid. That's tense. He's got to try and get some value in. He's got to try and get some kills. The lockdown. lockdown. It's really just absolutely brutalized them. Slowed them to a crawl. They can't break it. They have to fight it. Tense here onto the angle again. They're swarming into the position. And behind them, Texture rips them to shreds, rips them to pieces. Has to stick. And there's no chances. Not anymore. Gen G up to 12. You watch what Texture does on defense, it's so good. He gets pressured here with the paranoia, instantly updrafts, kills the player, dashes forwards to re-fight that. And he immediately notices it's a fake. If he dashes away there, they don't get the info, and those B players might not have stayed on B. But because Texture is so confident to take the fight, to dash forwards, to look for the others, he gets to come to the rest of his team, this is Cap, guys. They ain't coming. I, just, I mean, absolutely. It's uh, looking disastrous, to put it lightly here, for Sentinels on this map. Now, of course, it's not like the whole series weighs on there, but I think that every single map matters, and especially early on, you know, going back to what we were talking about. I mean, Kaplan in that coach interview saying they found comfortable in the earlier maps in this series, Ascent being one of them, split coming up. And it's Icebox, that territory where it gets a bit messy. If Gen.G ends up taking this map, they're forced to win out on split just to continue that series, yeah. and then they will be forced to play on Icebox. And bearing in mind, Genji beat them 13-5 on split, dismantling yeah. them. And does Genji look like they've taken any break today? Does Texture look like he isn't performing incredibly today? I don't think so. The Sen players themselves shooting back a bit more, but I think they're also just getting outplayed. The teamwork, the way that Genji are playing off each other, and their, their confidence is just getting them so much more info to play with on their defense side. This defensive ascent has been lovely to watch. Out. Certainly feels like there could not be a better moment for Pacific to pick up their first ever global trophy. And Gen G, if they get this one step forwards on ascent, they'll be one step closer to hoisting it. On the precipice. In through mid, that's Sentinels. All eyes on that now. Second with the knives. Grouped up as well. Might be looking for a flash. Peek through, drone. Enemy and forwards here, just showcasing. Oh, it doesn't break it in time, so it actually spots both players, and they're already up through mid as well. Paranoid misses, texture! Clean shot, rips it away, and this is this. Dreams being dashed. Out and away, John QT, maybe a chance. Turn with the one kill, but it's still a player disadvantage, and they don't know where the rest of them are. Into the corner, hello, finding Lack here. Three versus three, Munchy going. Walk about, Celsius dropped dead to rights. 2v2 still spike in the open. And a control gained and gathered. Munchkin follows through with the fire. Doubled up now, understanding the win con. Smoke to block it off. It's all on Sassy. They know he's not close. Karen. He's actually looking the left. other way, right, too. Dude. They split, split up. up to form two 1v1s. Could Sassy be given anything? He just doesn't expect them coming from spawn. No, there's no way you expect this, and this could be it. This should be it. The map done and dusted. Gen G is ever closer to that title, ever closer to that trophy. But it's not done yet. The job isn't finished. They said that themselves when they won the upper bracket final. Just because we won here, they said, doesn't mean that the job is finished. But they're in a great spot. They're in a fantastic spot. It's yet to be seen if Sentinels can fight back. Don't go anywhere. You know you don't want to miss it. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trading that old thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage so you can take all the pics. So many selfies.
preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. None, yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro and iPad and Apple Watch SE all on us. Only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings.